Clay Thompson said the game four was the best that he has seen. He's at a front row seat to his finals performances. He thinks it's the best Steph Curry has ever played. So, Brian, you have also had a front row seat to pretty much literally every single finals game that yeah. Steph Curry has played. Do you agree with him? Yeah, because the stakes on this were so different and the surrounding cast was so different. This is a different finals for Steph and the Warriors. This is not an elite Warriors team. This is probably... I know that the injuries in 2019 happened, but this is the weakest Warriors team that has made it to the finals. They need Steph more than anything. And what's more it's interesting about this is that the Celtics have elected to let him go. He's probably played since AAU ball, getting swarmed on defense every time he plays in a high-level game. He is getting more space. This is an incredible confluence of a team daring him to beat them and the team needing him so badly. We have Steph Curry in this special special moment here. He is 34 years old. He is a multi-time MVP. He is a multi-time NBA champion. He is a first-team All-NBA player. He doesn't have to do anything to set his career right. But yet he has this golden opportunity to carry his team to a title. We are at such a special thing that we're getting to see. And guess what? Steph realizes it. In the first three games, he shot 22 times. He said, I understand now that the Celtics are going to allow me to try to be great. And he did it in game four. And he's going to try to do it three more times. I don't know if he can do it again, but he feels it. And I think we're... I'm very pleased that I'm going to be able to be here and watch this because I think we could be seeing some real history in these next three games. I completely agree with you, Brian. And I think the conversation pregame on Hoop Streams with Dorsberg, it was, will Steph need to take 30 shots to have a monster game? He took 26 shots and still got these incredible numbers. And we asked him the other day preparing for our radio interviews, and he's like, I understood the urgency and the tone that I needed to set for the rest of my teammates. We've talked so much about their core and the championship DNA that is there. And yeah. while that deserves a tremendous amount of respect, this is also the first time that all of those role players have been here. And so to hear Steph come out with that level of focus, set the tone, uh, that's definitely a historic number. And then you throw in the tech from Steve Kerr, like they were completely oh, yeah. locked showing in. the Warriors yeah. how we're going to play in this very important game four. Uh, Richard's had his say here, so Perk, <laughs> go ahead. No, I mean, I don't even think it's close when yeah. it comes down to his performance in the Garden. Mm. We, we talk about a lot of greats like Jordan having 63 or, or in, in, the, in the Garden. I know it wasn't in the finals. We know about LeBron James' epic game six when he was with the Heat. We saw Jimmy Butler go in there and drop 47 in the Eastern Conference Finals. And here it is, when everything was in Boston favor in the Garden, in the hostile environment, matter of fact, the most hostile environment that Steph has played in Ever. in his playoff mm -hmm. career. Mm -hmm. And he goes out there in a must-win situation, basically, right. to tie the series up and drop a 43-piece, all drumsticks and 10 biscuits. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about right now? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.